Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everybody, depending on wherever you are. My name is Naufal Kandoth, working at ISER Kolkata under Sandy Sports Scheme. Today, I welcome you all for the webinar program entitled System Thinking in Science and Technology. Our today's speaker is Mr. Mohammed Hanif. He is a mechanical engineer by profession, having more than 10 years of experience in aerospace engineering in Germany. And moreover, he has several years of experience in system thinking. So I really believe that his deep knowledge and perspective and views on the topic will be really beneficial for all of you and this could be potentially translated into your daily life. Before going into that, I would like to briefly introduce the FIRST organization. FIRST is a non-profit organization that is founded in 2013 by a group of professionals working in science and technology. By utilizing this extensive expertise of the first organization we have inspired many phd and postdoc stu many students to carry out their phd and postdoc research and also the academic other academic research or industrial research and also the company jobs basically based on the science and technology and we are also doing some small scale students project and some science project to basically to inculcate the scientific timbre and the, and the scientific knowledge or the, the curiosity of the science among the students. And webinar is one of its program that we have been doing since last seven to eight years. So with that said, I conclude here by inviting Mr. Muhammad Hanif to carry out his session based on system thinking. And once again, I thank you all for showing up here. Mr. Hanif, the session is yours. So today I will try to take you through the topic of systems thinking in science and technology. And I thank first for giving me an opportunity to uh, give you this talk. So a little bit about what I would like to cover today, hopefully maybe 40 minutes, I hope we can cover this uh, session. So I'll talk a little bit a bit about me and then uh, there's a small challenge maybe uh, we can try that out and then I will talk, take you through uh, what is what are systems and what is systems thinking and why systems thinking is important <clears throat> and what are the key elements of systems thinking so I won't be going much into the in the theory of systems thinking because there are a lot of materials available in the public domain. And at the end of the session, I'll give you some references which you can go through. Instead, I would like you to take you through uh, an example of how we can actually um, utilize systems thinking in our day-to-day -day work or study. So I hope it will go well. Okay, a little bit about me. <clears throat> Uh, I basically hail from Calicut, Kerala, and now I'm in Berlin. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by profession and I specialized in energy management. And then I worked for around last 10 years in the field of gas turbine propulsion systems. So I'll just put a small timeline. Uh, so I started as a guest lecturer at Government Engineering College Code. Code. I really like that job. Then I move on to doing some research at National Institute of Technology and Composite Materials. And then I did my master's and then I joined uh, a consulting firm called Quest in Bangalore as a mechanical engineer. And then I was moved into the team called Systems Design. So that was my first exposure to systems thinking, systems engineering, and all about systems. And then later on, I moved into different roles like validation and verification in Berlin. And then I went back to India and worked as a systems engineering and development engineer at Rolls-Royce India. And now I'm back in Berlin with Rolls-Royce Deutschland as a development engineer, verification and validation. Basically, I uh, work on gas turbine engines for uh, aerospace applications. And I uh, 
means my team worked to develop them. So we involved in um, making engines, testing them and uh, certifying them and get them ready to fly. So that's the job I do now. So a small disclaimer. So this presentation represents my personal view and understanding of the topic systems thinking in science and technology. And whatever I present here is available mostly in the public domain. And the intention of this presentation is for awareness and education purposes only. And I have used some images here and I would like to thank Pixabay for that. It's all free download images. And also I made some pencil sketches my own that you might see at the end. Okay, so we are talking about systems thinking and I would like to show you something. And if you, if you all can take uh, a small piece of paper or one or two sheets of a paper or a notebook and a pencil or a pen, it would be good. I can give you maybe some 10 or 15 seconds. You can go and get it and come back. It may not be useful immediately, but I think it's good to have that because there are some uh, activities which we can try to do. Okay. So uh, in the next slide, you just have to observe that. And then I will ask you a response after that, okay? Okay, now, Maybe one or, one or two of you can respond. Um, so after seeing this picture, did a response generate in your mind? Did, did you think of something? What did you feel? Maybe one of you can just, to make it interactive, maybe you can give a response. Or what did you understand? Unity, this? unity. Okay. There are people say happiness. Yeah, good. Uh, let me go. Uh, two people say happiness. Yeah. Right. That's good. Yeah. Anyone okay. else want to share something? Happy you kids. Unity in friends. Yeah. Happy good. children. Diversity. Yeah. Good. I see a lot of good Team. responses. Team. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Maybe I'll show you one more picture. Childishness, yeah. Now, what's your response here? Anger. He's hurt. He's hurt. Okay. He is angry with somebody. Okay. Stretched. Yeah. Aggressive. He, he might be in the finishing line of a winning race or something. Yeah, I, I see so many comments also. Yes, I think he, he has achieved something. Goal yeah. scoring celebration. Yeah, good. Okay, now maybe I'll move on to one more image. Okay, so here I'm not asking your response, rather I would like to say something about what you're just seeing. So if you, if, you, if you think about what happened when you saw the first two images, I'm not actually trying to analyze the images. You would have observed that your response came pretty quickly. Your, your eyes captured the message quite quickly and you made a judgment or you made an impression or you could observe and make an analysis pretty quickly about the picture. But if you look at the picture, it was quite complex. There were a lot of pixels, images and so on. Now, when I asked you this question, maybe some of you might have left it like that. Okay, I don't want to calculate it. Some of you just observed it. And some of you might have tried to calculate it with a pencil and a paper. Some of you might have tried it with a calculator or some of you might have 
uh, calculated in the mind. But when you look at this two types of images, your mind was not functioning the same way. So actually these exercises are from a book called Thinking Fast and Slow, written by a Nobel Prize winner called Daniel Kahneman. So he talks about thinking in that book actually. So it's, a, it's, a best, it's one of the best selling books. And uh, he puts together how our mind works in very good fashion. So here he says that when you looked at the first images, you, your mind, one aspect of your mind, he calls this system one. So it's like effortless thinking worked on, it pitched in. But when I post this question of numbers, it's an effortful thinking. So you're, there is a part of your mind which does calculations and computations and it is it takes some effort. So you might be thinking, why, why am I presenting these things in the beginning? This will help you in later when we go through some of the exercises. And also I think when we start about thinking, we need to understand what people have understood about how mind works. It's very important. So there is a lot of research and studies going on about how human mind works. And I just showed you some examples to make you realize or already you might be knowing that there are things in our mind which works slightly different. And one other interesting thing which I noticed is that he is using the word system for this mind. We might have heard we have like a conscious mind and a subconscious mind and an unconscious mind. We might have heard such terminologies and we, we might be familiar with that, how such uh, uh, phases of mind works and acts. But this was something new to me because I, in, in my uh, schooling or in my um, uh, academics or in my work, I have been coming across various aspects, various things, and my, didn't, my mind didn't respond to it in the same way. In certain cases, I was quick to answer, quick to approach. I felt ease uh, approaching problems or uh, approaching issues, but at certain things, I felt a little bit difficult to push through. So it's a natural phenomenon. Our mind works different when we are posed with different challenges. And I just wanted to show you an example. Now, coming into the topic, uh, today's topic, what are systems? We come across systems every time. Our human body itself is a system. So for the purpose of this discussion, I would like to define what we are calling system here. So the, the definition is very clear. It, a system is a set of elements or parts or ideas which are connected to each other directly or indirectly with a meaning or purpose for existence. Now, uh, I have just made bold three letters there. So even if you don't take away anything else from this uh, talk, at least you should be taking these three points together. A system is a set of elements. Elements could be uh, tangible things which you can touch, feel. It could be intangible things like ideas or concepts or messages communication. Uh, so it can be anything, but it's an element, it's an entity which you can distinguish by its characteristics. So a system is a set of elements. And one of the most important criteria for system is it has to be connected to each other directly or indirectly. There will be direct wired connection or physical connections, <clears throat> or there may be indirect connections. Maybe one of the element might not be connected to and another one. So that is one other, other important criteria if we want to call something as a system. And the third one is quite interesting, which has a meaning or purpose for existence. This may not be, it's a, sometimes it's not easy to find a purpose for some systems, like especially the natural systems around us. Maybe at some point of time, we may not know it has a purpose, but when we get more knowledge and when we have more understanding, we know there's a purpose for it, that. But when you talk about systems made by human beings, of course, there's a purpose for that. And easily, at least the manufacturer or the designer of the system would recognize the purpose for the system. And that is 
that's that's the way I would like to put what is the system from my understanding about uh, systems. And this this a body called INCOS. It's the International Council uh, Council on Systems Engineering, uh, and they put this. Uh, definition like this. A system is an arrangement of parts or elements that together exhibit behavior or meaning that the individual constitu constituents do not uh, have. So here, uh, what they're trying to say is that, suppose if you have a uh, uh, cycle, a bicycle, so it's elements when put together, it makes a meaning. It can carry somebody. A person can uh, transport himself or we can transport something else on the cycle. But when you take it ap apart, uh, that parts doesn't have a uh, meaning or the behavior, it, it cannot exhibit the behavior of the uh, bicycle. So if you take the tires apart, it can roll, it can move on its own, but still it cannot exhibit the behavior of carrying a person. So you can distinguish or you can understand a system uh, in this fashion. So why this is important is that, uh, uh, usually when we want to uh, approach something or approach a problem or approach a physical entity, uh, we try to uh, break it down. And when we try to break it down, we need to be very careful about the connections. Maybe in this next slide, I go through a, a bit more detail about that. So, uh, yeah, so I I'll come back to the point later on. There are a few more slides where I can discuss in detail. Uh, for the benefit of time, let me move on. So I talked about what is systems and also we uh, did an exercise on thinking. And now let's uh, go through the topic of systems thinking. So when you hear the word systems thinking, you might think, is it so complex? But actually like the word, word sounds, it's our thinking about systems. And some people say that systems thinking is itself a system uh, in its own. So in my understanding, it's a way to think. This is from my experience. It's the way to think, organize thoughts and ideas to achieve something. That's what I've experienced from my own work related to systems and systems engineering, systems design, and so on. So it's also a way to look at opportunities, problems, needs, objectives and goals in a holistic manner. And that holistic has a uh, very high significance here in terms of systems engineering. It brings uh, in the perspective of systems in assessing any situation and it your idea. Maybe I can give you a small example, not directly related to what I would do, but something which is close to what I do. So there was a, um, there were two aircrafts uh, flying together in one, a traffic control region and uh, they were flying pretty closely uh, their altitudes were pretty close and uh, the air traffic controller who controls the uh, flights recognized that this aircraft might collide and he uh, gave instruction to one of the aircrafts to uh, fly a bit lower so that uh, they could avoid the collision in air, they were flying, so they were close. Their altitudes mean their height from the ground at which they were flying were close and the path was also intersecting. So the one easy way to avoid uh, collision is one of the aircrafts can just fly at a different height or altitude, we say, so that they don't collide. Even if their paths intersect, if they are flying at two different heights, they won't collide. So the uh, the Air traffic controller was trained and he gave this instruction to one of the aircrafts. But what happened is that this aircraft has very uh, sophisticated equipments inside of them. And uh, those instruments or those uh, systems were instructing the pilots. And those systems recognized there was a collision avoidance system. And that system recognized that this air, um, aircraft might collide. And it gave also instructions to the pilots. But the, the way in which this collision system instructed was the, just the opposite way. So uh, let's say that aircraft A was flying higher and aircraft B was flying lower. So the collision avoidance system told both aircraft to separate. So A fly a little bit higher and B fly a little bit lower. So there's distance between both of them. 
but it was just the opposite which the aircraft, uh, aircraft uh, the ATC, the uh, air trans, uh, transport control, air traffic control uh, person instructed. And those uh, two aircrafts unfortunately collided and people died. So here uh, we can see that we had uh, different systems working together, but they were not assessed or integrated and they were conflicting. And that's why uh, we had this accident. So there are several other uh, aspects where we see that when we approach issues, problems, if we don't bring in systems thinking, we might miss some of the aspects. So we'll go through one example where we all can uh, experience the system thinking. So I'll cut short the theory. So there is uh, one more definition uh, given by Barry Richmond. He was one of the persons or the earliest person, according to one of the scientific journals who coined the word systems thinking. Uh, so he defines systems thinking as the art and science of making reliable inferences about behavior by developing an increasingly deep understanding of underlying structure. So it's a bit complex. So I was trying to put in a simple way that um, the, the better we understand uh, about systems, the benefits we can have and also the dangers we can avoid. Okay, so maybe uh, a little bit more about why it is important. So you can see some pictures on the right. You can see um, uh, it's, an, uh, it's uh, one of the pictures uh, represents our neurons, how our neurons works, it's highly complex. And the other picture represents a, a, a garden or meadow with a lot of flowers. And um, uh, there is a study which was looking at how, um, how pollination happens in gardens or farms. So they found out that uh, there are certain times of the year wearing which certain insects uh, or pollinators come and, and they go because that's their breeding time. And at other seasons, some other come and some seasons, you know, honeybees, they are also pollinators. So what happened is that once um, after using a lot of uh, pesticides and fertilizers, most of the uh, natural uh, pollinators died and only the honeybees survived. So what happened is that the crops which they want to cultivate, they had to depend just on honeybees to pollinate them. And now that system is very fragile. It's not a robust system because in natural systems, we were very robust. And now we have to, or they have to just depend on honeybees. And um, because honeybees survived these fertilizers and pesticides, at least they have one pollinator, but it is now very fragile because if there is some change in climate or some other reasons, honeybees disappear, then we don't have any pollinators to pollinate the uh, crops. So you don't have yield. So there are several other things. If you look at natural systems, it is sometimes redundant. We don't observe the interrelationships. So like I told, there are elements, there are interrelationships, and this is a purpose. So sometimes we look into things and we don't understand this. So the world we live in, it's highly interconnected, uh, our natural uh, world. And nowadays the devices we use, for example, if you look at automobiles some 50 years back, you cannot compare with automobiles nowadays. It has functions which they could have never imagined which would be part of an automobile. And also the devices, um, within the systems are getting very highly com complex. When you say complex is that um, we have neurons which has certain functions. It, do it does that particular, it is a neuron, but it communicates to certain systems, for example. Others does some other function. So the same units in the system are getting highly specialized. They are getting highly talented. In a similar way, uh, the machines we build, uh, the devices we make, are getting highly sophisticated and the elements within them are getting highly sophisticated. So uh, the inputs they can receive, the amount of data they can uh, deal is getting uh, tremendously uh, higher and higher every day. So that means uh, the protocols, uh, the laws which we, which we use to control them becomes uh, inhumanely, uh, it will become very difficult for a human to understand that because it's getting too complex. So if we don't have proper tools, tool sets, we will fail to understand the world around us because it's very important that we understand the world where we live in. 
also it is very important uh, that uh, since we want to increase or we are pushed to increase the complexity of the devices and the uh, uh, machines which we use we also need to equip with us with uh, uh, tools and methods which will help us to confront this because if you ask there is a limit for human beings like a person can remember like seven to nine numbers at a time so if you want to comprehend something if you want to analyze something we have our own limitations to abstract information understand it and make some sense out of it so if we don't have effective tools we will fail to understand uh, the world we'll, we live in and the things which we interact with so to make sense of the world around us and to utilize it in our favor uh, we need a systems mindset so that was the gist of the slide maybe one more point i would like to uh, bring here which is not on the slide is uh, both in science and technology uh, one of the most successful methods were reductionism maybe people who are uh, doing research might understand this easily it is not a complex maybe if we put it very simply if i simplify it it is breaking things down so if you if you want to understand a system basically what it says is that you try to break it down so if you if you are studying let's say some matter uh, you try to break it down to molecules atoms and then you get more sense out of it so anything you can break down so one of the parallels of reductionism is like uh, for example in mathematics it's not exactly an analogy but a similar parallel is if you want to calculate the circumference of a uh, circle how do you calculate that it's it was very complex and one of the methods they used in earlier days i think now also we use a similar logic is to break it down into straight lines so the finer you make the circumference into uh, the, uh, straight lines of smaller and smaller length the more uh, closer you get to the uh, circumference of the circle and it was a method which was uh, approximated but was feasible at some time back so there are so many um, concepts which come under the reductionism which we also use in technology like if we want to make a machine we try to uh, break down the machine or the purpose of the machine into smaller functions so this is widely there and that is it's there's nothing wrong with it and it worked and it's still working but when you have uh, systems which have elements which have uh, very high uh, highly sophisticated um, capabilities uh, then it becomes uh, impossible to use such approaches and there is a, there there is a similar approach or a just a uh, antonino of it it's called synthesis so synthesis is in a way like you go from uh, bottom to up you start building up your uh, know how and in my opinion system thinking is a you know it's a merge of synthesis and analysis and it works well for you know an uh, synthesis than analysis but um from my own experience there's nothing wrong in using or systems thinking works for both you know synthesis and analysis but when you want to make stuff when you want to as a scientist or an engineer or as as a person or as a sociologist or or as uh, anyone who wants to uh, make something new in the world i think system thinking approach helps them so now let's discuss uh, uh, maybe there are one two more slides then we go to the challenge um, so what are the key elements of systems thinking so maybe we covered most of it if not we can just go through it so we need we need to have a mindset to understand the universe here it means not the universe which comprises the solar system and the earth it's the when you say system you you can you can uh, you can have a uh, you can have a focus where you want and everything else will be your universe so for example if you uh, think of um, um, let's say let's say the crop you want to cultivate um, so your system is the farmland and the crop and the uh, inputs and outputs from the from your uh, farmland everything else is you can consider as a universe so uh, what systems thinking is saying that you should have a mindset not only to look at your farmland and the crop but also to the universe to get a better understanding and then you can leverage 
the universe for your benefit. And then uh, we also should know how to define boundaries. So uh, when you when you approach something, um, you need to have a capability to define boundaries because if you don't know how to uh, separate your system from the universe, you might struggle to achieve your goal within the limited time or uh, budget or resource you have because we don't have infinite time or budget or resources to approach problems. We have a set boundary. There are very few people who have the luxury of this, but most of the cases, even if it's a scientist or a student or a professional, we are bounded by budgets, uh, timelines, and resources. So if you don't know how to define your boundaries, you might struggle because if you open up the universe, of course, the results might be better, but up to where, where do you define your boundaries? And then you should have an eye for understanding the relationships between the various elements. It's not easy. You might have to seek help of maybe specialized people also in this respect. Then you should have a, always a mind to see things holistically rather than uh, seeing at the, uh, you know, sometimes going into the details are needed. Uh, it also rewards, but when you want to implement systems thinking, you should have the mindset of looking things holistically together. <clears throat> and then, of course, you, when you go into systems thinking, you might uh, uh, deal with complex systems and simple systems. So when you deal with complex systems, you should have a mindset to understand complexity. That doesn't mean that you should have all the faculties within you, you can take help. And then you should also have a uh, you know, skill to communicate across disciplines. When, because when you try to implement systems thinking, you, you are forced to communicate across disciplines because it's not like you sit in one discipline. When you go through the example, maybe you can understand. And then you need to take advantage of different concepts. So, but there are so many inhibitors to this because basically our nature is that we try to deal with surface issues. Like if we want more yield, we put in fertilizers. If you want to get the bugs out, we put in pesticides. We, we want to deal with the issue there and then, but we don't think further to that. And I told reductionism and mechanism help us in the last centuries, but too much of that may not help when we want to deal and make use of the systems knowledge and know-how. And I told you, if we don't have the tool set, our capabilities, our cog cognitive capabilities is a limitation to implement systems thinking. And also the systems thinking is not a natural act. It requires deliberate effort, like we saw in the picture. So, uh, to make an impression about the picture, it's a very natural act. It comes out automatically. But if you want to take up systems thinking, you need to use your second mind. That's system two in, in, in the words of Daniel Kahneman, that you need to put some efforts. Okay, now we go to the example. So if you have paper and pen, uh, you can get ready. So here uh, we take a simple example, which we all are familiar with. So we are talking about a means of transport. Okay, so you, you may use your pen and pencil uh, and your paper to draw some sketches uh, when we go through this task, okay? So we'll, <clears throat> uh, um, I'm just trying to give you a flavor of systems thinking. Systems thinking is a very broad topic. It has very simple tools and methods to help you understand systems, understand the elements, understand the relationships, understand the functions. It has some methods. So this, uh, you can see there are a lot of people interpreting because systems thinking is not just approached from technology or uh, science. Uh, it is also approached from social, social sciences. It is also approached uh, from an angle of health sciences. So various uh, disciplines has try, tried to you know, take in the benefits of systems thinking and also build it up. So based on that, if you try to search about what is systems thinking, there is a lot uh, in the literature and in the public domain and examples available. So I'm just trying to give you a flavor of one or two concepts of systems thinking so that uh, maybe you get, a, uh, you get some interest in the topic and you can try to apply. So whatever you're going to learn here, I'm pretty sure uh, if you are a professional or a student or anyone who want to make something out, it might be a useful tool for you. And some of you might be already familiar with this. Let's see. So now uh, I'll, I'll post the problem. Okay, maybe you can listen. So uh, 
you are you need to post yourself um, in the product development function of a manufacturing firm so it's like an equipment manufacturer that means they make machines okay they make means of transport let's say and uh, you are in the shoes of a uh, product development function you don't need to necessarily call you as an engineer manager you just see that you own the function of you know developing products and and your team or your company or your business they identifies that uh, they would like to introduce um, a product which can be a means of transport and they want it, somebody to own it and they want to use it multiple times it's not like use and throw so that's their product objective they want to make and sell you know um, uh, means of transport so the task given to you is to figure out the opportunity in detail and provide a high technical solution uh, to the market which makes you know which uh, which which has some business sense okay so this is the task now i don't know uh, there are there are 36 people so i think um, azim shah people can unmute themselves right yeah if people would like to uh, ask directly they can do that otherwise they can type in the questions okay okay yeah because maybe one or two responses would be good maybe all need not respond but at least a few people if they can respond it will be good and how much time do we have now uh, um, nofel dr nofel because based on that i can make it faster or slower maybe like five to ten minutes okay yeah then i think we need to make it fast so how do you proceed with this challenge that's the question if you are given such a challenge how do you proceed somebody want to respond And type in if they like you would start first with market research to understand if this product is going to be a, a product that will stay because you said it's not a one time yeah use Good. case it's going to be reused mm -hmm. because you don't yeah. want to develop a product which is not going to stay there right because yeah good anybody else want to add okay for the benefit of time i think i need to proceed because there's not too much time there are three four slides okay and there are some concepts which i want to share so there is no one way to proceed with this challenge okay because people think differently so people go in different directions and uh, basically we would normally like somebody when you give such a task to ask questions because uh, when i or when you give a task you may be knowing several things but you may not be willing or you may not be it may not be coming to you to give every details to the you know the people you give the task so normally you would ask back questions to understand what's what's the need you know so there are i'll so and also uh, there are different ways because here actually this is a very simple example um the solution comes to our mind very quickly because we are familiar with this challenge you know to transport people automobiles quickly it will come but it's always i'm trying to give you an example which you can relate later on it's always good that we make some sketches because it helps later i'll show you how can how you can build on your sketches so i've just made a very simple sketch it's my own sketch with the paper and a pen i don't i didn't use any tools so i'm trying to convey that systems thinking is a methodology which you can start with paper and pen or a pencil okay you can you, you don't need uh, sophisticated tools for this to start with but there are sophisticated tools within systems thinking that you can develop based on a need and you don't need to lead, learn every tool which is out there you need to learn only which tools you would like and which will be useful for you so here i just put a concept like uh, a means of transport so there is a person i assumed it's a person for the initial uh, you know to go and then he or she or the person or the thing or the good needs to go from a to b so i need an enabler okay 
So that enabler for transport, it could be anything. So let's see. Now we try to ask some questions. So in generally, when you want to develop something or when you want to approach something, there are some very easy questions which you can ask. Things like what, who, where, when, why, how. These are the general W questions and how question. And the why question has some more significance because you can ask why several times to get you know more and more in-depth answer. It's called 5Y analysis and, and all we say. So these questions, you can see when I ask the questions, what, like what do you want to transport? So the answer came, passengers, goods and animals, let's say. So I used who because that what and who in this context came because we want to transport uh, who is passengers, okay? Then I asked the question, where? So the answer came, it's surface of the earth, land, road, off-road, okay? Because it's also important. Does he want to go above the surface or under the surface or somewhere else? And then uh, I asked the question, when? So the answer came maybe from my you know, research or from the people I asked the question or my boss, for example, in this case, if they know the answer already or if they are decided on that, uh, then they told it's day and night and all weather, okay? Because it has different meanings. When you talk about vehicles, which has to you know, uh, go in the desert or go in hill stations or go in, you know, snow uh, terrains or some vehicles you want to operate in uh, minus temperatures, negative temperatures. So, you know, when it so has a lot of depth meaning and then why, why do you want to use this? Is it for work, leisure, business or whatever? And how? So you, do you have an idea about transport? Is it an enclosed carriage or an open carriage? Is it like autonomous? So these questions will give you a start and this is called requirements, you know, gathering the requirements. And in systems engineering, we call it requirements engineering or requirements elicitation. So benefit of the time I'm moving. So now when you, that's say one level of understanding. Okay, so from the one level of understanding, there are several tools and methods by which you can come up with solutions. So your transports, uh, you, you make, you go in depth. It might be a week long exercise of deep diving at that level. You don't decide your automobile. With that inputs which you had in your in this slide, you can drill down a lot and come up with a solution. Okay, so I will not go to that. I'll jump that we have a solution. So we did some systems thinking and we came, came up with a solution. So solution is we need an enclosed carriage and it's an automobile. So we have some solution now, which has some uh, physical entity around, okay? Now uh, we can go further down. There are, there's a tool called, so now we, we want to proceed further. How do we proceed further now? So since this, I can't make it interactive, I am pushing ahead myself, sorry for that, um, because of uh, limited time. We, we use a to tool called stakeholder analysis, okay? So we'll come back to all these concepts and maybe review with the concepts, review with the ideas we learned at the beginning. So stakeholder analysis is nothing but, um, you keep your system. So your system of interest or the solution which you came up is, is an automobile, okay? And it has a weird shape here. I purposefully put it like that because we don't know how it is going to be later on. And it's very important that we, we need to restrict ourselves in giving it, you know, uh, we need to give the least physical um, structure to it because the more and more we, you know, uh, solidify it, our imagination and our flexibility stops. So it's very important that uh, you keep it as a concept like a black box in the beginning. So here, when I ask my ask to myself, who will be the stakeholders for this uh, means of transport or the automobile, which or the enclosed carriage, which I want to make. So people definitely, and the people branch, there will be a lot of other aspects which I need to uh, take care. Goods, animals, energy, environment, atmosphere, and so on. And you can see regulations. So this is like a brainstorming exercise, which you can do alone. You can in, uh, research yourself, or if you have a team, it will be very powerful to gather the team together and then discuss who are the stakeholders. Because stakeholders, in a way, is giving you the environment. 
so you know now you have system and you know the environment and you can either include some of this because when you do a stakeholder analysis sometimes you find certain things part of the system for example if it's not an autonomous vehicle you will have a person as part of the system also because the effectiveness of the vehicle the safety of the vehicle how comfortable uh, you go will also depend upon the person who's driving it so in a sense when you see the automobile or the means of transport if you want to make it effective if you take out the you make some random assumption, assumptions about the driver and you keep it outside the vehicle won't you know function uh, as you want or you you won't win in that business or win in that uh, um, uh, endeavor so what you need to think is that when you don't draw the stake, stakeholders sometimes stakeholders appear both inside the system and outside the system and this activity will enable you to identify such things and also you can get a feel of the boundary of the system okay now there's another approach which goes further down it's called context diagram okay so here what we do is that we go a step further and here you can see i have just taken two stakeholders here people and terrain so in the previous slide you can also see there is something called terrain okay road or off road terrain can be in different i just put what came to my mind immediately okay so if you do a brainstorming several things will come out for sake of this exercise i took two out of them people and terrain then you can see lot of interactions you know so the system interacts you know it boards the people people may control the system you know uh, it secures the people the system and it transports the people it protects the uh, people it comforts it obeys the commands you know and so on so with the terrain also the terrain could guide uh, the system and the terrain would uh, impact the system like receiving inputs in terms of loading conditions it can assist the system terrain sometimes assists the system for example if you are if you have an autonomous vehicle they look at the you know road uh, markings and so on to actually guide the autonomous vehicle through so there is a lot in depth research which needs to go in the direction of terrain and your terrain can bump you or comfort you and so on so i just took two of the um, you know items or entities um, in the environment and try to map the relationships so what were we talking about we were talking about elements we were talking about interrelationships right you can uh, you can uh, see it here and now further on there are so many other tools like this which will help you to understand the functions which need to be allocated to this system because always the functions which the system need to deliver will be derived some from some uh, you know requirement or interaction with the Um, environment or the stakeholder in other terms so here uh, i try to give you a flavor uh, of the concept of systems thinking and very small easy but powerful tools which you can use to you know embark upon systems thinking in whatever you are trying to do and the same exercise you can do in you know uh, not only in science and technology you can use this in Uh, uh social sciences or healthcare medical sciences anywhere if you want you can use similar approaches to identify the things around you i hope this was useful and uh, i also put some references and resources which you can go through maybe if the if you are registered the organizers will uh, share the uh, presentation with, with your emails used for uh, registering uh, for this webinar so thank you for listening and if there is time we can take some questions yeah we have 5 to 6 minutes for the questions since we started at 906 yeah if you want to share something or uh, you know um, if you have some ideas you can share or if you have some questions yeah i'll try to try to answer so whoever feel free feel free to write on the message on the chat box otherwise you can ask question we have like 6 to 10 minutes maximum yeah uh, maybe i'll start with the way of system thinking 
and from a personal experience i often found uh, it really difficult to start drawing the ideas you know so later i realized that it's kind of you know the training that you get from the schools so currently i, I live in the uk so my you know my my daughter uh, she goes to school and she, they get a different way of you know uh, writing down or drawing the concepts on the paper you know they get this learning from the school so if for some reason uh, i was thinking we lack this kind of you know maybe i don't know what's happening currently but this kind of skills to learn from schools and how to draw the ideas properly on the paper so i was actually presently thinking about you know uh, what could be a way to improve uh, this kind of you know transition from your thoughts to the paper properly <laughs> And a second question is, um, do you have any suggestions for any tools, open source tools that we can, you know, use to help this translation thing? Yeah. So first, I think was your comment, right? That we, uh, I understood that you you made a comment, right? So it was yeah, not that, a question. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what you told is right, and uh, what I what I read from the literature or the uh, public information available. I was also surprised that even the West, I thought they were good in systems and thinking, but they were also blaming their education system, which actually takes away, you know, uh, the, the mindset of systems thinking because we are fed everything and we are taught to analyze things and we learn very little about synthesis. And when we try to synthesis, that's where we actually will be forced to apply systems thinking because analysis you know works perfectly with reductionism with the principles of breaking down and going into the deep uh, you know very details it works for very well for analysis but when you want to synthesis that's where you know systems thinking uh, plays a role and the education system predominantly is occupied by analysis and synthesis at least from my experience synthesis was you know kind of a last subject or last last topic we would try to uh, learn on explore and useful resources i think uh, there is a exactly to answer your question there is uh, if you see a point number the reference number i don't know whether i put it here. Ah, the reference number 6 um, using a systems thinking approach to figure out why a ball drops bounces and stops so that is um, a example of you know inculcating systems thinking uh, by national uh, science teachers association in you uh, in america so they they have put across a site where they are using um, you know tools and methods and ideas where we can actually inculcate uh, systems thinking for children maybe this is something which you can also try and all these references like in course uh, uh, that's an international council on systems engineering. They talk about different tools and methods which we can use without any computers. You can use just sketches and uh, some things you can do with Excel sheets in capturing your ideas for systems thinking. And then there are paid tools which you can find maybe searching online. So I would say you can start with Incos and NSTA where you would find some, uh, you know, useful tools and methods for trying out systems uh, thinking. In course, is a very good consideration because uh, if in engineering systems thinking has emerged directly into something called systems engineering. So systems engineering is built on the principles of systems thinking. I was trying to find something on science as a whole, but I couldn't find because science is very vast topic, but I found there are many places like healthcare, for example, systems think thinking is being already being applied. They use systems thinking in healthcare very actively. So you can find, I think I put an example here. Yeah, systems thinking for healthcare system strengthening. So if you go through that, you can see what tools they are using and how they are utilized. And there are some, some YouTube videos uh, from MIT, which I put here, which will give you, uh, uh, you know, some more uh, ideas and thoughts about uh, systems thinking. Is there any other questions? All right, thanks.
So, is there any other question? Please ask. Otherwise, just write in the chat box. We have another four minutes more, four to five minutes more. So, if no question, shall we conclude the session? Yeah, maybe I can make some small concluding remarks. So, sure. I don't know how you felt uh, this session, um, but in my opinion, my personal opinion, my day-to-day -day work also, when I get stuck with something, because when you work in a big organization, for example, you may not be uh, part of the initial, you know, thinking process. So there will be already hierarchies, and there will be all already, you know, departments, and for example, your research or a topic might be in one you know side of the whole systems you know aspect so then you might be thinking what how, how, how what's the use for me to use systems thinking or how can i actually you know benefit from systems thinking so my uh, my view is that you can apply systems thinking within the system or you know element you have so if so, someone has done a you know brilliant systems thinking exercise at your organization or at your university at your research center and they have laid out everything you can maybe understand that in the beginning you know try to understand how it works if it is nothing already done you can do your own sketches and you know try to fill the gaps going um, you know forward and within your uh, domain or within what you have in your hand you can apply these principles you know treating it as your system and trying to understand the universe because the tools I just showed you some tools here in the beginning, but there are so many tools like, you know, casual loops and things which go in detail in depth. So you can go in, you know, in the depth to up to the depths which they use models. There are things called model-based systems engineering where you actually, you know, make mathematical models of the system and so on. So it is up to you to which depth you want to take on. And from my personal experience, everybody and anybody can you know use this tool and benefit from this so at the end you will not tell like uh, you know yeah the crash example no if you if they have considered you know the human element in air traffic control actually we could have used some new protocols in place to avoid such you know collisions how how there were other examples also like uh, there were several other aircraft accidents where systems uh, and the human interaction has caused problems so if you use systems, you know, thinking, you can avoid such mistakes and you don't need to regret about it. That's, that's, that doesn't mean that you make perfect, you know, because um, if you want to think about something, you need some basic knowledge that is there. So that's where you take help of other people. So always, uh, this is not an individual systems thinking. It's not just an individual's, uh, you know, method. Whereas analysis, you might be comfortable to do your uh, alone. But in systems thinking, there are points there are, you know, situations where you are prompted or you need to get help of people uh, understanding. Because like I told, one of the important skill of a systems thinker or a, somebody who, you, who is using systems thinking is to communicate across disciplines. Because disciplines will come into a picture and you need to, you know, uh, play a role of communicating across disciplines. So you need to abstract the information and then, you know, uh, try to bridge everybody together to you know, make the desired outcome, or to solve solve the problem, or make the desired outcome um, uh, that you want. Okay, that was it, and with, thank you very much for participating and listening, and thank you for first for organizing this session. Now, well, I think uh, that's all from my end. Thanks. Yeah. So with with that presentation, I hope that you have understood about the system thinking, and uh, you can start to think about system thinking to translate in your daily life. And I hope you enjoyed the session. With that, I, we conclude here and saying you a goodbye.